हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज़ मयूर बाले आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन सिविल डिपार्टमेंट डब्ल्यू आई सोलापुर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिज़ाइन अ ग्रीड चैम्बर व्हिच इज़ अ प्राइमरी ट्रीटमेंट ऑपरेशन इन वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट सो व्हाट आर लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स वुड बी एबल टू डिज़ाइन अ ग्रीड चैम्बर एज प्राइमरी ट्रीटमेंट ऑपरेशन इन वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस सी वॉट इज a uh, grid chamber and why it is needed a grid chamber is usually a secondary unit operation uh, after a screening uh, in waste water treatment plant task basically to remove a grit now what is a grit grit is the heaviest material in waste water which includes various substances like uh, you can have a sand then coffee uh, grounds then gravel cinders Uh, big size materials which are having a specific gravity between 2.4 to 2.65 and they are very much heavier than organic material now why we need to remove it a uh, grit is heavily abrasive uh, which can uh, damage whatever mechanical equipments and pumps uh, from excessive wears uh, which also reduces uh, clogging and minimizes the need for uh, cleaning downstream tanks which are uh, provided in biological treatment units uh, and a lot of digesters which can be provided in secondary or tertiary treatment units now how does it work generally grit chamber leverages differential uh, sedimentation exploiting the fact that grit settles very much faster than organic materials in waste water so this is a typical uh, diagram of a grit chamber where the grit is uh entering and there are some swinging gates we call them as proportional wears and from this uh, proportional wears the flow rate is uh, balanced out if suppose flow rate is very much higher then uh, proportional wear would reduce down if suppose flow rate is very much lesser it would increase the cross sectional area by opening its gate and automatically the flow rate would increase when the grit is coming into a chamber that is this grit chamber Uh, these particles would uh, settle down at the bottom and pr uh, proper uh, slope is given uh, by which a grit is collected at one point and it is taken out some inlet and outlet arrangement is also provided it is generally around 25% of the uh, volume uh, which is uh, controlling the flow rate and also it is making sure that everything would be running very much smoothly and from the outlet section the effluent would be taken out now if when i'm starting to look at the design of grid chamber i have to consider various factors like uh, what should be the flow rate whether i have to design it for uh, minimum flow rate or average flow rate or peak flow rate generally it is considered that the peak flow rate would be uh, assumed for a grid chamber and with respect to that i have to look at what type of a sedimentation would be there generally the design of grid chamber is shown to be a uh type 1 uh, sedimentation where discrete particles would be settling down in which i have to think about various parameters of grit particles like size then specific gravity and what should be the uh, sewage uh, viscosity as per uh, manual uh, the minimum grit size is generally taken to be 0.2 mm for a design and with preferable range of 0.1 to 0.15 mm the uh, the settling uh, velocity for these particles can be calculated using standard transition law equation now understand that uh, even though we are designing uh, the grid chamber with respect to type 1 but it is not a type 1 discrete particle it is a grid where it is showing some different uh, characteristics so the design would be done with respect to transition zone or transition flow Uh, fine and which can be uh, calculated by using hazen's modified equation that is vs is equal to 60.6 in bracket ss that is specific gravity minus 1 d uh, d means diameter of uh, grid particles in centimeters uh, multiply by 3t where t is your uh, temperature of sewage plus 70 divided by 100 by which we can get a, a settling velocity of Uh, grid particles now uh, to get the optimum velocity of flow through the grid chamber it is also dependent on what is the scouring process and for which we have to look at the critical velocity of score that is vc 
beyond which the particles of certain size or density once settled should not be comes up again uh, the, and it can again join to the stream it should not be happening and for that we are calculating the critical velocity using shields formula that is vc is equal to kc under root uh, g s is minus 1 small d where uh, your vc is critical velocity and kc is the val uh, value we have to take between 3 to 4.5 generally four value is adopted while designing the grid chamber and g is uh, gravity value here understand it we have to take not 9.81 we have to take 981 because it uh, diameter we are considering it in centimeters. There should be minimum two units of uh, grid chambers. One should be manual, another should be mechanical. By which if suppose one gets fail, another grid chamber should be operational and the process should not stop. For velocity control uh, grid chambers, the head loss generally varies between 0 0.06 meters to 0 0.6 meters depending on uh, device used for velocity control. Depending on the interval of clearing, additional depth of uh, storage of grid shell also be provided. Further, the additional free board uh, between uh, 150 to 300 mm is recommended. Bottom slopes are based on which type of a scrapper you are providing uh, uh, for a typical type of a grid chamber. Now, let us see one design of grid chamber. Design a grid chamber having a rectangular cross section and proportional wear as velocity control device. Uh, for the following data, maximum flow rate we had considered to be 20 MLD. So, flow rate of waste water is 20 MLD. Uh, diameter of smallest uh, grid particles to be removed is 0.2 mm. Average temperature of sewage considered is 20 degrees Celsius. And specific gravity of uh, grid particles is 2.65. Now, I have to first of all calculate the settling velocity of grid particles using Hazel's modified equation and I have to assume the settling is happening in a transition zone. As we had discussed about the formula that is 60.6 in bracket SS minus 1 small d 3t plus 70 divided by 100 I will put all these values that is 60.6 plus specific gravity which we had considered 2.65 minus 1 multiply by 0 0.02 understand here the diameter of grid particles is in mm that is 0 0.2 mm but in the formula i have to take it in centimeters that's why i have divided by 100 uh, divided by 10 and i had got 0 0.02 multiply by uh, 3 into 20 20 is your temperature plus 70 divided by 100 by which i will get a value a about 2.6 centimeter per second now, I have to check the critical velocity also using Schultz formula. Taking the multiplying factor that is Kc as 4, I will put uh, these values here and I will get 4 under root, 4 under root, uh, 981 that is a gravity value uh, multiply by 2.65 minus 1 multiply by uh, diameter that is 0 0.02 by which I will get a value about 22.8 centimeters per second or to 0 0.228 meter per second. Now, this is the horizontal velocity and critical velocity. Fine. Now, I have to go uh, for cross sectional area for which I have to first convert this MLD value of flow rate into meter cube per second, which is given 20 MLD. 20 MLD means what? 20 multiplied by 10 raised to 6 that is in millions multiplied by 10 raised to minus 3 converting liters to meter cube divided by 24 24 means 24 hours multiplied by 360 that is converting it into uh, se seconds so i will get a value of about 0 0.231 meter cube per second now what is cross sectional area as we know the uh, basic formula q is equal to av or uh, a is equal to q divided by v so, this is the value of Q and this is the value of V that is velocity of sewage or critical velocity which we had calculated in the previous slide. Here you can see. Now, I had put this value here and I will get a cross sectional area about 1.0153 meter square. Now, 
providing the width about 1.25 meters and liquid depth that is capital H required to be 0.812 meter let us provide a free board of 0.3 meters and space of 0.25 meters for sludge accumulation so total depth would become 0.812 plus 0.3 plus 0.25 which is coming about 1.362 meters keeping the depth uh, about 1.4 which is slightly greater than 1.362 by which we can properly accompany freeboard sludge accumulation and the flow now we have to consider the ratio that is h divided by l or depth divided by length which is proportional to your velocity of settling divided by horizontal flow so of putting all these values that is 2.6 divided by 22.8 would be equal to 1 upon 8.769 by which i will get l equal to 8.769 uh, capital h i know the value of capital h which we had got it here now i will put up here and i will get the value of length about 7.12 meters now let us make the allowance of 25% for inlet and outlet zone hence keep the total length uh, would be 1.25 this 0.25 means additional 25% multiply by the uh, length which we had calculated earlier that is 7.12 and we will get a value that is 8.901 meters now i will slightly increase it and i will keep the length about 9 meters so we had got various dimensions that is width would be equal to 1.25 meters depth would be 1.4 meters and length about 9 meters now to get the values of proportional wear size uh, which is our control device uh, this proportional wear is basically controlling the flow rate uh, before the uh, sewage entering into the grid chamber uh, now uh, for calcul because the proportional wear is kind of a elliptical in size so for uh, getting the coordinates of each point uh, for developing the elliptical shape uh, we will be using this formula in which the capital a is generally considered to be 0.035 meters and taking the value of c about 0.6 Uh, we can say the q is equal to 0.6 which is our c value multiply by uh, b b means one coordinate point divided by uh, 2 ag a g means your gravity in uh, in bracket h a which is your depth minus a divided by 3 and putting the value of a and c i will be getting the value of b that is 0.231 which is our flow rate this one divided by 0.6 under root 2 multiplied by 0.035 which we had considered here multiplied by 9.81 that is gravity uh, divided by 0.81 that is depth minus 0.035 that is the value of small a divided by 3 and i will get the value of b that is 0.58 meters now to get various coordinate values of this elliptical proportional wear i will be putting up the equation that is generalized equation which is x is equal to b divided by 2 in bracket 1 minus 2 divided by pi uh, tan inverse of y divided uh, under root y divided by a now i know the value of b and i know the value of a i will put up here and i will start to change the values considering the x the uh, y values suppose i am taking the value of y to be 0.01 meter i will put this value of y here and i will get the value of x coordinate so i will get the value about 0.2 similarly i will start to increase the value of uh, y values and i will get the values of x similarly i will start with 0.01 then 0.02 0.03 similarly i will go with uh, till 0 uh, 0.4 0.5 0.6 till 1.00 and i will get the value of x 
Now putting this into graph, you can see that the elliptical shape of the proportional wear starts to come. These are the references I have used to make this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.